Welcome to Becoming a Cook. I'm Charlie Wetzel. Today I want to teach you how to roast a chicken. This is one of my go-to recipes. It's, it's one of the earliest things I learned how to cook. It comes across as kind of an elegant thing, but it's really going to be something that you can keep in your repertoire that's going to be really, really good for you. I have here a five pound chicken, a fryer, and when you look at chickens, you'll see young chicken, you'll see fryer, you'll see roaster, you might see stewing hen. You want to stay away from a stewing hen that's older and tougher. You want to stay away from a roaster even though we're going to be roasting it. You want a nice tender chicken like this. I've just got this from the store. And the first thing you always do is check to see if there's a giblet pack. And this one has one. And that's a good thing. I'm constantly making chicken stock, but I've made so many things recently that I'm out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw this into this pot. And I'm going to throw some water on this. I'll show you. There's a neck, a liver, and a heart. You never know what you're going to get in a giblet pack, but as long as you've got some pieces and you throw in a bouillon cube, you can make enough stock for your gravy. So I'm going to look this over. I'm looking for things like this. This is just a stray piece of skin. I'm going to throw that in there. If there's any large chunks of fat on the back. And a lot of times there, there are big clumps. This just has this one little piece here. I'm going to th throw that in my stock pot as well. I'm going to look for things like pin feathers. It's not really crucial that you pull these off, but these are larger ones and I just assume not have them on my roasted chicken. I've already drained this in the sink, so it's pretty dry. I'm going to fold these wings back. So as long as you're gentle, you just, you just simply take the wing and fold that back this way. And the reason you're doing that is you just don't want this to burn when it's cooking. So I'm just going to flip that behind. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to season it. This is really, really simple. Salt, black pepper. I'm almost out on this one. Oh, there we go. Garlic powder. Don't be stingy with this. paprika, and I prefer a good Hungarian paprika that's a sweet paprika, a little bit of thyme, you just want a few leaves, and a little bit of basil leaves. My chef Mark Holger taught me that basil is good with chicken. So I just want that on there. Now I'm going to flip this. I want to make sure I'm getting salt and the other seasonings on the sides too, so I'm just kind of tilting this as I go. Black pepper, garlic, powder, like I said, I want to be generous with that, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of basil, and a little bit of paprika. Now sometimes I'll stuff the cavity, which is that part. I'll put some garlic in there, I'll put some fresh thyme or fresh rosemary, but I'm doing this the simplest way just because I want you to see how quick and easy this is. Okay, so to roast this. For, for a lot of years, this was my go-to roasting pan. It's just a simple little square, and as long as the chicken fits in it, you're good. This is what I like to use now, and I just give it a little bit of uh, spray in the bottom and then put the chicken in. The, the important thing here is that the sides have to be low. You could even do a roasted chicken in something like this, as long as it had enough surface area. If the sides are low, then the heat can get to the bird and it'll get a nice color. The other thing you have to take into account, whatever you roast it in, you're going to also make gravy in. I've set my oven at 350, I've preheated it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in and I'm gonna put the convection on so that it cooks a little bit more quickly and evenly. Okay, now I'm going to put water on this and make my stock. And I'm just going to give this a bouillon cube. The chicken's been in about 30 minutes, so I want to check on it and I want to show you what we're going to be looking for to see when it's done. So 
So here's the chicken. It's, it's not close to done. But the way we tell is by what's inside here. If you look in the cavity, and I'm going to tilt this up just a little bit, you can see red. Right down in there. The way that you can tell a chicken is done without a thermometer is you want these juices to run clear or just have the tiniest little hint of pink. I suspect this five pound chicken is going to take another 30 minutes. It could take a little bit longer, but I'm going to keep an eye on it and I'll check it again in probably about another 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, so let's take a look at the chicken. So you can see we still have red or pink. It's getting a little bit lighter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drain this off. And that way we'll be able to have a better look at it on the next look. I'd say this needs about another 15 minutes. It's actually been 13, 14 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and check this. You can see the skin on this chicken is getting to be a nice color. You have to watch out because this is going to spatter. So I'm going to look at the inside here. You can see some pink. A pink is all right, but it's also cloudy. So I think we're probably about eight, ten minutes away. I'm going to give this just a little bit longer. Then we're going to take it out, let it rest, and make gravy. All right, let's check again. Okay. If you look at the juices here, you can see there's just a little bit of rosiness to it. But as I tilt this, it's starting to run clear. So this is ready to go. So I'm going to take my chicken out of the pan, put it on the board, and let it rest. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a push to keep it from sticking to the bottom. And then you can actually just do this with a fork. Now we're going to make gravy. First thing I'm going to do is get this on the heat. And I want to assess how much oil I've got in here. You can see there's a mixture of oil and other liquids. This was a pretty lean chicken. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of canola oil to this to make the gravy. It's cheating, but sometimes you have to cheat. I'm going to give this some flour. And I eyeball this based on the amount of oil or fat that's in here. I've got my heat on fairly low. The trick with gravy is you don't want it to be lumpy. So you want to get the proportions right. I can give this a little bit more. And right now I'm doing a couple of things. I'm getting the flour and the oil incorporated together. I'm going to turn this down. I'm trying to make sure I get the lumps out of it. And I'm cooking the flour a little bit so that it doesn't taste raw in the gravy. This is the chicken stock, the quick chicken stock I made. I'm just going to put a little heat on that while we're waiting. Okay, now that this is incorporated and it's cooked a little bit, I'm just using a little bit of white wine. I usually use a Chardonnay for, for chicken uh, gravy. And now that I've got the wine in, I'm going to turn this up. And I'm going to scrape the bottom of this pan because there's lots of chickeny goodness that has laminated itself on the bottom of the pan. That's what these little dark bits are that are coming up. And then the other thing I'm going to do 
is put my chicken stock in there. So this is just a really ugly chicken stock from, from those few pieces that I had. And I'm just going to give that a pour. I'm going to make sure no objects fall in with it. And then give this a little bit more heat. It's actually better to put cool in than hot because if you do a really hot liquid, like if this were boiling, I could end up with really bad lumps in my gravy. Okay, so while that's going, I'm going to give this magic salt. Just use regular salt at home. And I want to give it garlic, garlic powder. That's starting to smell good. So at this point, I want to continue cooking this to cook the alcohol off from the wine. And I can watch this now. If it gets too thick, I can add more chicken stock. If it's too thin, I just cook it longer. I want to start getting an idea of, of how my flavors are in this. Everything that was on the bottom now has been scraped up. So all that flavor is now in the gravy. That's pretty much where it needs to be. So if this didn't have enough chicken flavor, I could add another bouillon cube. I would just drop it in there and then I would crush it and stir it around. It would dissolve. If it gets too thick, you can see it's starting to thicken a little bit. I've still got a little of my chicken stock I can add. If you opened up your chicken and you had no giblets and you had no chicken stock in the, in the house, you'd still be okay as long as you stock this. I always have beef and chicken bouillon cubes in the house and they're ready to go. So if I were missing chicken stock, I'd have still done the wine. I'd have done water instead of chicken stock and I would have added probably two of these. All right, I'm gonna put this down to the lowest heat and we're about ready to plate. All right, so I'm gonna cut this chicken up the way I normally do for my family. So basically that's gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut, cut it so that I have thighs, legs, breasts, but I usually cut the breasts into smaller pieces because they're disproportionately large compared to the other pieces of the chicken. So first thing I'm gonna do is just separate these leg quarters from the breasts. You need a sharp knife for this, and if you have a heavy knife, that's really, really good too. I'm gonna find this keel bone, I'm gonna pick a side, and I'm just gonna slice through. Now, I cut through the keel bone, and I also cut through bone there, okay? But you can see now, that this is separated. I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna find the backbone, and I'm just going to put my knife right against it, I'm going to take the heel of my hand and lean on it, and then I'm going to finish the cut here. So now the chicken has been halved. I'm going to drop this down, and I'm going to separate the leg quarter from the breast. Same thing with this one. And this one, this one, because it doesn't have the backbone side, it just comes off on its own. Now, if you look at this, you're going to see there's a tiny bit of rosiness here. Most Americans cook their chickens to death so that they're actually dry. And if you've ever eaten dry white meat, that's the reason. So these have been allowed to cook a little bit less, which is fine. For these leg quarters, I just want to take the drumstick off. There's one thigh. And you can see a little bit of a line there, and I'm just going down, and I'm trying to find that joint. As I said, these are really large. So what I typically do with these is I'll just cut this in half. When I get to the bone, again, I use the heel of my hand, 
to cut it. And same thing with this one. So there's my chicken, all ready to go. Typically, the juice that's on the board, I'll pour into the gravy. So I'm going to do that now. And I have to be careful to not drop all the chicken into the gravy. <laughs> So now that I've put that, those juices in here, I'm bringing this back up to a boil again, just because I want to make sure it thickens a little bit, and we'll be ready to eat. This five pound chicken ended up being in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes. If you get a smaller chicken, obviously it's going to cook faster, but if you look at the, at the cavity the way I showed you, and you look for clear juices or just slightly rosy, you're going to be right on with the cooking time. My daughter typically likes a piece of white meat and actually she likes it boneless. So I'm going to indulge her and just take this bone off of this piece right here for her. And I'm going to give her a little bit of kale. This is Tuscan kale, which I've never seen before, but I saw it in the store and I thought, well, that looks interesting. We've got to try that. And then, of course, her favorite, which is gravy. Lots of gravy on the rice and just a little bit on the, on the chicken because I want to keep that skin crispy for her. And there's enough down here that she can put the chicken in it too. Here is roasted chicken with gravy and today it's with rice and kale.